20 weirdest royal jobs that you won't believe exist. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to work for a royal family? From the outside looking in, being a working royal seems luxurious and glamorous. But did you know that many of the royal family's roles are a lot more strange than you think? These unusual royal titles are as grand as they are strange. Today, we are going to take a look at the 20 weirdest royal jobs that exist. Some of these roles will surprise you. Please subscribe to this channel and like this video if you want to receive future updates from us. Number 1. The Lord High Admiral of Scotland The Lord High Admiral of Scotland is one of the oldest royal titles in the world. It dates back to the 15th century and has been held by many influential figures, including Mary Queen of Scots and her husband Henry Stuart. The title was abolished in 1707 when Scotland merged with England to become Great Britain, but it was re-established in 2014. The Lord High Admiral is an honorary position and does not involve any real duties. Instead, the holder of this title is entitled to wear a naval uniform and is also awarded certain privileges, such as the right to board naval vessels and be present at any naval ceremony. Prince Philip was the Lord High Admiral until his death in 2021. He was appointed in 2017 and was the first person to hold the title since its reinstatement in 2014. As with most royal titles, the Lord High Admiral of Scotland serves more as a ceremonial role than anything else. However, it's still an important part of Scotland's history and will no doubt continue to be a respected title for years to come. Number 2. Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps The Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps is a ceremonial position within the British royal family that dates back to the 18th century. This position is responsible for supervising foreign diplomatic representatives as well as managing and organizing diplomatic functions held at Buckingham Palace. The current holder of this position is Alastair Harrison. The Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps is expected to attend various state events to support and represent the British royal family. These events can range from dinner receptions to diplomatic ceremonies. The Marshal must also ensure that protocol is observed among all foreign dignitaries and diplomatic personnel in attendance. This includes ensuring that there are appropriate seating arrangements and that everyone is dressed appropriately for the event. In addition to attending events, the Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps is also responsible for providing guidance and advice to the royal family when they host foreign dignitaries. This includes things like preparing gift lists, writing speeches, and ensuring that all international laws and protocols are followed. Furthermore, the Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps also acts as a mediator between the royal family and other countries when needed. Overall, the role of the Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps is an important one within the British royal family. It ensures that diplomatic relations remain strong and the protocols respected at all times. The current holder of this position, Alastair Harrison, has done an excellent job of representing the British royal family both domestically and abroad. Number 3. Keeper of the Privy Purse The Keeper of the Privy Purse is one of the oldest and most important roles in the British royal household. The role dates back to the 14th century and is currently held by Sir Michael Stevens, who was appointed in 2017. The Keeper of the Privy Purse is responsible for managing the finances of the royal household, including the king's wealth. The Keeper of the Privy Purse acts as a financial advisor to the king and royal family, providing advice on matters of financial management. This includes managing the Royal Collection Trust, which oversees the care and preservation of royal artworks, and advising on investments and taxation. The Keeper of the Privy Purse is also responsible for paying members of the royal family as well as organizing the king's official travel. They're also responsible for approving payments from the Privy Purse, which is funded by the Duchy of Cornwall, a private estate owned by Prince William and other sources. Number 4. Treasurer to the King The King's finances are managed by the Treasurer to the King, a role that's existed for centuries. The Treasurer is appointed by the King and is responsible for managing the royal budget and keeping track of the financial resources of the monarchy. The treasurer plays an important role in monitoring and advising on the state of the royal household's finances and producing financial reports. 
The treasurer, who's also the keeper of the privy purse, ensures that the royal family can live within their means. This involves assessing and providing advice on financial matters such as investments, budgeting, expenditure, and income. As part of this role, the treasurer attends monthly meetings with other senior members of the royal household. The current treasurer to the king is Sir Michael Stevens, who was appointed in April 2017. Number 5. Royal Train Bearer The Royal Train Bearer is a senior officer of the British Royal Court, whose main task is to carry the royal train of the monarch or another member of the royal family. This position dates back centuries and was considered a very important role. The train bearer was responsible for overseeing the members of the royal entourage that were carrying the royal train, ensuring that all members were respectful, had their attire in order, and were prepared for any possible dangers. They would also announce the arrival of the monarch and their departure. These days, the train bearer's role has largely been downgraded to more of a ceremonial role. They still accompany members of the royal family on trips and processions, but are no longer responsible for security, among other things. Number 6. The Royal Shoe Wearer Have you ever wished you could be responsible for making sure that all the shoes worn by the royal family were in tip-top shape? Well, then this is the job for you. The Royal Shoe Wearer is a position that dates back to the 14th century and is one of the more ridiculous jobs held by a member of the royal household. The job entails inspecting, maintaining, and repairing the shoes of the royal family, as well as providing them with new footwear when necessary. The royal shoe wearer has to be on hand at all times to provide any needed services, and must also be able to travel to where the royals are to perform their duties. Due to the nature of the job, only a select few individuals have ever been granted the position over its long history. The duties of a royal shoe wearer have evolved, and the current requirements include overseeing the daily maintenance of all shoes worn by the royal family. This includes not just attending to repairs, but also cleaning and polishing any dirt or scuffs on the shoes. The position also involves attending to any special requests made by members of the royal family, such as having a pair of shoes made according to specific measurements. The position of royal shoe wearer is a unique one and is often seen as a great honor by those who are appointed to it. It's a testament to both the importance of shoes in royal life as well as the high standards of craftsmanship expected from individuals in this role. Number 7. Yeoman of the Guard Yeomen of the Guard, or Beef Eaters, are members of the oldest ceremonial body in Britain, having been in existence since 1485. The Yeoman of the Guard is responsible for safeguarding the crown jewels and ensuring the security of the royal palaces. They're responsible for opening and closing the gates of the royal palaces and accompanying the king on official state occasions. They also help to lead royal processions, provide guard duties at royal events, and take part in other ceremonial activities. The Yeoman of the Guard is recognizable by their distinctive red, blue, and gold uniforms. They're an important symbol of British tradition and pageantry, with their origins dating back to the reign of King Henry VII. Number 8. Palace Attendant Palace attendants are a unique part of the royal household, tasked with ensuring the safety, upkeep, and security of the royal palaces and residences. They provide a wide range of services from being responsible for guests in the palaces to being part of the security detail. Palace attendants also coordinate transportation and logistical needs, as well as ensure that visitors are informed about protocol and etiquette. This job requires great attention to detail and a high level of customer service. Number 9. Page of Honor Page of Honor is an important and prestigious role within the British royal household, dating back to the days of the Tudor monarchy. The person holding this role is primarily responsible for assisting the monarch in various ceremonies and state events, such as coronations, receptions, state funerals, and more. To become a Page of Honor, one must be invited by the king or other members of the royal family. A Page of Honor's responsibilities include accompanying the king at official ceremonies and other events. They wore scarlet frock coats with gold trimmings, a white satin waistcoat, white breeches and hose, white gloves, black buckled shoes, and a lace cravat and ruffles. 
The pages of honor were abolished in 1996 by Queen Elizabeth II because she felt there were no suitable candidates who could fill the role. Since then, the position has not been reinstated. However, despite the abolishment of pages of honor, they remain an important part of British royal history. Their roles have been documented in numerous books, films, and television series, making them an iconic part of British culture and history. Number 10. The Private Secretary The private secretary is a royal job that's existed for centuries and is still important to this day. The private secretary is responsible for managing the king's affairs and representing him in certain areas. They're responsible for keeping records and correspondence, overseeing the royal household, and organizing the king's itinerary. The private secretary is also in charge of signing off on all letters sent to the king and ensuring that they're properly addressed and delivered. The private secretary is also responsible for setting up meetings with the king and other members of the royal family. They may also be required to make arrangements for travel, special events, and hospitality for guests. In addition to the above responsibilities, the private secretary also serves as a spokesperson for the king in various matters. This includes communicating with foreign governments and making sure that their policies reflect the views of the monarch. The private secretary is appointed by the monarch and serves at His Majesty's pleasure. The position is currently held by Sir Edward Young. Number 11. Carver A carver is a royal job appointed to a court or official gathering. The carver has to carve and serve food as well as present dishes to the guests. It's a prestigious position, and only highly skilled carvers can be trusted with such an important task. Carvers must understand how to cut, divide, and serve food properly. In some courts, the carver's also responsible for supervising other courtiers who help with service. Carvers need to be professional, courteous, and attentive to the needs of their superiors. They must also pay attention to detail, have excellent knife skills, and have an eye for presentation. Carving has been practiced since ancient times and is still an important part of many royal and ceremonial occasions. Number 12. Master of the Horse The Master of the Horse is one of the oldest and most prestigious positions in British royalty. It dates back to 1360 and has been held by a member of the royal household since 1660. The role includes organizing and supervising all state ceremonies involving horses, as well as managing the royal muse. The master is responsible for maintaining the royal muse and its staff, including grooms, coachmen, farriers, and vets. In addition, they're responsible for training the horses used in royal processions and other events. The master is also responsible for procuring and caring for the horses used by the royal family and is ultimately responsible for the safety and well-being of all the horses owned by the crown. Number 13. Keeper of the King's Stamps when King Charles needs help with his stamps, he turns to the Keeper of the King's Stamps. This is an official position within the royal household and has been in existence since 1664. The Keeper of the King's Stamps is responsible for managing the royal stamp collection, which includes stamps from around the world as well as those issued by the monarch. The Keeper of the King's Stamps also has the important role of ensuring that the collection is kept in perfect condition and well protected. This position also advises the royal family on any philatelic matters and helps organize philatelic events. It's a unique and fascinating job not many people know about. Number 14. Lord Chamberlain The Lord Chamberlain is one of the most important positions within the royal household. The Lord Chamberlain is responsible for organizing and overseeing all ceremonial events hosted by the royal family. They're in charge of managing the royal guest list, seating arrangements, protocol, and other details of the event. The Lord Chamberlain also serves as the principal advisor to the sovereign on matters of state and public policy. They're responsible for liaising with foreign governments and representing the royal family at official events. They may also serve as an intermediary between the royal family and other government departments. The position of Lord Chamberlain dates back to the 13th century and has been held by many distinguished individuals throughout the years. Today, it's held by the Lord Parker of Mincemere since April 2021. Number 15. Warden of the Swans and Marker of the Swans One of the weirdest royal jobs is the role of Warden of the Swans and Marker of the Swans. 
This position has its roots in medieval England, where swans were considered a delicacy for the wealthy. The swan keeper was responsible for ensuring that no swans were poached or eaten without permission. Today, the warden of the swans is a ceremonial position appointed by the monarch. The warden's role is to manage the riverine population of mute swans in England, Wales, and Scotland. This includes assessing their health and welfare, monitoring their populations, and advising on matters relating to their protection and conservation. The marker of the swans is responsible for carrying out annual swan upping exercises on the River Thames. This involves the capturing and counting of swans, marking any new ones, and keeping records for scientific purposes. The ceremony also serves to identify any swans belonging to the king or other holders of royal swan marks. Number 16. The Astronomer Royal The Astronomer Royal is one of the more unusual royal jobs, but it's a position of great importance. This role dates back to 1675, when King Charles II appointed John Flamsteed as the first Astronomer Royal. The Astronomer Royal has been responsible for overseeing the Royal Observatory at Greenwich since then. The role of the Astronomer Royal is to provide advice and support to the royal family on astronomical and scientific matters. This includes making observations with telescopes, collecting and interpreting data, providing accurate astronomical information for the Royal Navy, mapping the skies, and conducting research into astronomy. The current Astronomer Royal is Professor Martin Rees, who's held the position since 1995. He's an active member of the scientific community, having written several books and given lectures on a wide range of topics related to astronomy and physics. He's also a fellow of the Royal Society and has received numerous awards for his contributions to science. Number 17. The Gold Stick in Waiting The Gold Stick in Waiting is an ancient office in the royal household of the British monarchy, dating back to the 15th century. The position is traditionally held by a senior military officer and appointed by the monarch. The role of the gold stick in waiting is to assist the sovereign on ceremonial occasions. This includes attending state occasions and helping with the organization of the military parade. The gold stick in waiting carries a ceremonial gold stick, which is decorated with ribbons in the colors of the regiment they represent, as well as a white plume. During a parade, the gold stick in waiting will ride at the head of the procession. It's said that the position of gold stick in waiting originated as a way to provide extra protection to the sovereign during military parades. The post of gold stick in waiting has its roots in British tradition and is a reminder of the long and distinguished history of the British monarchy. Number 18. Master of the King's Music this is one of the more unique royal jobs, as it requires the appointee to be a respected professional musician. The Master of the King's Music is an honorary title awarded by the British monarch to an individual who is an esteemed and celebrated musician. Since its inception in 1626, the position has been held by some of the most renowned musicians in the world, including George Frederick Handel, Sir Edward Elgar, and Sir William Walton. The role of the master of the king's music is to compose music for official state occasions and other royal events. They're also expected to support the advancement of music within the country. To be appointed, nominees must have made a significant contribution to the world of music, such as having achieved international success in their field or having written critically acclaimed pieces. The current holder of this esteemed position is Dr. Judith Weir. Number 19. The King's Flag Sergeant The King's Flag Sergeant is a royal role that's responsible for carrying the King's flag on state occasions and other official engagements. This role dates back to the days of sailing ships when the flag of a powerful leader or ruler would be flown on board. The position's still in existence today as it's an honor to be selected as the King's Flag Sergeant. The role involves providing ceremonial duties as well as logistical support during official events. This includes attending royal functions and official meetings, overseeing military parades, and standing guard at royal residences. In addition, the flag sergeant will also be responsible for taking care of the royal standard and ensuring it's always presented in perfect condition. The flag sergeant is appointed by the king himself and only the most experienced and competent military personnel are given this great honor. It's a highly prestigious role that requires a strong sense of duty and loyalty to the monarch. 
Those who serve as the King's Flag Sergeant are expected to have an excellent knowledge of military history, etiquette, and protocol, as well as impeccable attention to detail. Number 20. The Royal Horological Conservator If you're a fan of watches, you'll be surprised to learn that there's an official royal watchkeeper. This job's known as the Royal Horological Conservator, and it's been around since the 16th century. The position is now held by Fyodor Vandenbroek, who's responsible for conserving and repairing the extensive collection of watches owned by the British royal family. Vandenbroek is also responsible for maintaining a record of the watch's origins and identifying any necessary repairs. He works closely with other clock and watch experts to ensure the royal timepieces remain in pristine condition. The Royal Horological Conservator is an important role in ensuring that the royal family's valuable watch collection stays in perfect working order for generations to come. It's also a great way for fans of clocks and watches to get up close and personal with some of the most exquisite timepieces in the world. The British royal family is rich in history and has had many unique and interesting roles throughout time. From the Yeoman of the Guard to the Warden of the Swans, these are some of the most unusual roles available. Though they may seem odd, they've all served important purposes at one point or another. Even today, these roles are still carried out with the utmost respect and reverence, upholding centuries-old traditions and protocols. Whether you're fascinated by history or just curious about what goes on in the royal court, it's worth taking a look at these unusual jobs to understand how royalty shaped our world over the centuries. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. What did you think about our video? Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button and share. Also, leave a comment if you have a topic you want us to cover. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.